All right, so, so far we're doing more of like a sign-in implementation, but what if you have a confirmed password like you're likely going to have on a sign-up page? What's that actually look like? Uh, so let's actually try it. Well, first off, we can go ahead and grab a styled input. And since we've already done all of our refactoring, all we have to do is change a few fields. We'll set this to confirm password. We'll set our password to confirm password. And then format key rather than password, it'll be confirm password. We can then go ahead and update our initial values. And we'll add confirm password in here. Okay, and then most of the work is going to happen inside of our validation to make sure that it matches our password. So what we will want to do, um, even though it's not required, I like to start specifying a few thing, basic things. A string, we want to say that it's required. And we'll go ahead and set a label as well for any error messages uh, that may show up. So that's the basics that we would actually need to set up. Now, the way we would actually go ahead and test if it's equal uh, is via, again, the RAR, uh, via, come on, type. Okay, is via the test function again. And what we can do, we'll give it a name. We'll say passwords match. Next, we wanna give it an error message. Passwords must match, you fool. And then, uh, we'll want to go ahead and create a, a callback function to go ahead and test equality between these values. Now, the way Formic works is it depends on this uh, to basically manage the internal state, or rather, yep, uh, to manage and check these different things. So rather than using an arrow function here, we need to preserve the value of this, basically, that yep is expecting. So we need to use a function rather than an arrow function here to make this work correctly. Um, so what we can do here, we'll create a function that's going to take a argument of value, and that's the current field's value. And what we can do is we'll return if this dot parent, so parent is referencing the uh, kind of overall object that is our validation schema. And then we can say this dot parent dot password, where password is representing the field we want to compare it to, and then we want to set is it equal to the current field's value? So now if we save this, uh, we can go ahead and set, well, we can see we've got our normal confirm password is a required field, and then we can set this to a value, and we can set this to a different three character value, and we can see passwords must, our error message of passwords must match a fool showing up. So now if I update that to be the same secure ASDF password, we can see our error messages go away. If I add in valid values here, make everything valid, submit it. You can see we've done a little bit of client-side validation on the uh, password and confirm password to make sure they're the same value. We can show a custom error message when the passwords aren't the same. And we've done a fair amount of work client-side to immediately give the user feedback on uh, any issues that they may have with their field values. Now, uh, we'll cover this a little bit more in the next video, but make sure you're still doing your server-side validation. This is just kind of purely for the user's sake to get, do this client-side validation um, so they can get feedback really quick versus having to constantly submit to the server and get error messages back.